is good. Amen. I got a praise report. Like to hear it, hear it go. My praise report is my wife is back. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can we give God praise for our first lady? Amen. Hallelujah. She's back in the house. Amen. It ain't right when she's gone. Amen. It ain't right. Amen. So we just praise God. God is so good. Listen, um, this morning is the morning like no other because we're believing God to move like never before. I believe by faith it's going to be one of those Sundays and you're at the right place at the right time and God is going to show up and speak a word directly into your life. Do you believe it? Amen. Do you believe it? Amen. 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 And even before we get started, I want to welcome all of our viewers online. It is so good to have you worshiping with us on behalf of myself, a beautiful wife, Teresa, and the whole entire Freedom Movement family. We just want to say welcome and glad that you are here. Listen, if you live in the Atlanta, Georgia metro area, we would love for you to join us in person live, 1148 JBL Court, Marietta, Georgia. And we are going strong every Sunday, and we're believing God to have his way like never before. Amen? Amen. Listen, let's jump right into this sermon series. Hallelujah. God is moving. And we're in our new sermon series, and it's simply called Fearless. Is anybody blessed by this sermon series so far? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to continue in this sermon series, Fearless. And I believe the Lord has something very powerful to speak into our lives and into our spirits. This is my prayer. My prayer is that when we come out of this series, the church will look different. I'm believing God that he would even use this to transform the church. Amen? That there will be such a boldness, such a boldness, that the enemy won't know what to do. Amen? I got to make this one declaration before we get into this. Guess what? I don't know if you know it or not. You are fearless in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So this sermon series, I'm preaching to the choir because I'm looking out and all I see is fearlessness. Even if you don't feel it, sometimes you got to speak those things that are not as though they were. And even if you're struggling with fear, I need you to declare in your own body and say, I am fearless. Somebody just say, I am fearless. No, no, I want you to say it like you mean it because you, this fear is about to be broken through. Amen? Amen. You're going to walk in your true identity. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to go right to the word of God. I'm excited about what he's going to speak into our life. Open up your Bible to the book of Matthew chapter 14 book of Matthew chapter 14 and for your hearing I'm going to read verses 22 through 33 Matthew chapter 14 verses 22 through 33 as is our custom all who are able we ask that you would stand for the reading of the word all who are able we ask that you would stand for the reading of the word Hallelujah. We're in the Gospel of Matthew. Hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. I'll be reading from the ESV, English Standard Version. It reads as follows. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds and after he had dismissed the crowds he went up on the mountain by himself to pray when evening came he was there alone but the boat by this time was a long way from the land beaten by the waves for the wind was against them and in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter said, Lord, 
if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Amen. People of God said amen. amen. Hallelujah. I want you to look at your neighbor on the left and say, neighbor, neighbor. Good, morning. good morning. It's so good to see you. I've got a word for you. Step out. I'll look at your other neighbor on the right. Look at him like you got an attitude and say, neighbor, so glad you're here. You're at the right place at the right time. But I've got a word for you. Step out. Oh, if you received that, somebody just clap your hands and give God praise right now. Let's pray right where we are. Father, we give you glory. We give you praise. We thank you for who you are. We thank you, Lord, for your presence in this house. Thank you for the word that you have set out before us. And we ask right now that you would speak to us like never before. We need to hear from you. We need a word from you. We ask that you would even use me. Hide me behind your cross. Fresh anointing fall fresh. That your word would go forth with boldness and with clarity. It would accomplish the very thing that it set out to do before the foundation of the world. So we ask right now that you would rebuke and hinder every distraction, everything that comes uh, in between us receiving and running with the word that you have set before us this hour in Jesus' name. So we ask that you would have your way. Give us eyes to see. Give us ears to hear, hearts to receive in Jesus' name. We know, acknowledge, and declare that the devil is already defeated. He has no power. There is no truth in him. And we thank you for the victory that you've already given us through your son, Jesus Christ. So Spirit of the living God, we believe you by faith to have your way. Move by the power of your spirit. Uh, we ask that you would speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. We ask it all in Jesus' name. The people of God shout it. Amen. Amen. Step out. Step out. Well, if you woke up this morning and stepped outside about 8 o'clock, it is confirmed officially that the season has changed. And I got to tell you, I am not happy about it. <laughs> but it is what it is, amen? amen? Truth be told, the season has changed. And not only was it a confirmation that the season had changed, but God also spoke to me, the season had changed. And I said, Lord, what are you talking about? The season that you're talking about is physical. But God said, the season that I'm talking about is spiritual. And I just want to speak it to somebody's life and make this declaration so you understand your season has officially changed. Amen. Amen. Come on now. What do you mean? How do you know? Here's what I know, because this is what the Lord is speaking over the corporate body. I want you to hear this. We are officially in a new season as a church. Amen. What season is that? I'm glad you asked. We are officially in stretching season. I got two amens on that. We are officially in stretching season. Uh, what is stretching season? Stretching season takes place when who you are today is not the fullness of who God created you to be. Stretching season happens when God has a work for you to do that's greater than your capacity, greater than your intellect, but you are not yet looking like what you're supposed to be. The Lord has a way of ordaining a stretching season. Can I tell you something about stretching season? Stretching season ain't comfortable. 
Nothing feels good if somebody pulled your arm way out of socket. You'd be real mad and ready to fight. But we are in a time where stretching season is absolutely necessary. Because when you stretch something and you stretch it enough, its shape changes. When you stretch it enough, it can no longer look like what it used to look like. This is why for some of us in the room, and you can confirm it by saying amen, some of your comfort zones have become uncomfortable. Amen. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking to somebody. This ain't for everybody. Everybody's going to catch this. But there's somebody that where you are comfortable and chill out, all of a sudden you are restless. Where things used to just be okay, all of a sudden you are unsettled. You know why? Because God has ordained a stretching season. Amen. It's very important that you catch this. Stretching season is not something that you dread. Stretching season is something that you embrace. Because God loves you enough that he refuses to keep you where you are. God loves you enough that he refuses to keep you in your same way of thinking. To keep you in your same capacity of faith. To keep you in your same level of spiritual maturity. God is at a point we talked about it last week where it's a Kairos moment in the body of Christ where it's not about Kronos time. It's not about us. It's about God's season that he is ordained how he wants to move in the life of his church. And he's raising some people up to do a powerful work for the Lord. But before you can be used, you must first be stretched. Amen. Amen. Am I talking to somebody here? This bears witness in somebody's spirit. And you're wondering, why are things not feeling the way they used to? Why am I not comfortable around those same circle of friends that I used to be? Why am I comfortable in those old stale habits? Because God is working a new thing in your life, and it's time to bring you forth from where you are to where you're supposed to be. Yeah. Somebody say amen. amen. So guess what? You can no longer stay where you are. You can no longer say, this is who I am you got to deal with it. Because what God is doing now, you can't be stuck on who you think you are. You've got to walk in who God says you are. Am I talking to somebody here? Something happens in the church where the church as a whole allows themselves to be stretched. Oh God, miracle signs and wonders take place when we allow ourselves to be stretched. We allow ourselves to be shaped and molded by the things of God. But I got two things that you need to understand if you're going to be stretched. Unfortunately, not everybody is going to say yes to the stretching. And some people are going to say, you know what, I'm good. I'm, I'm, what I'm doing now, I'm, we're going to continue to do that. I'm good. But there's somebody that's going to say, Spirit of the living God, have your way. I got these two pointers. Somebody write this down. We're teaching church. I want you to get this so you can walk in your stretching. Watch this point. Number one. It's simply this. What you are becoming is greater than what you are going through. My Lord, my Lord. I'm going to say that again in case you missed it. What you are becoming is greater than what you are going through. I'm saying this to somebody because many times when God ordains you to have a stretching, he also allows you to go through something. Am I talking in the right church? Sometimes when he allows, when he ordains you to be stretched, he allows you to go through some things. Some things are painful. Some things are hurtful. Some things are uncomfortable. And I just want to give you a heads up. So when you go through these kinds of things, you have the proper context of what's going on in your life. Because it's very important that you go through something, but you don't have it in the wrong context. See, it's one thing to go through something and you have no idea what's taking place. But it's another thing to go through something where you understand you're in stretching season. Yeah. I'm upset that it's cold outside, but I can't be that upset because I understand this is what the season calls for. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Are you hearing this? So when we go through, when we get knocked out of our comfort zone, 
When we allow, when God allowed even the enemy to come against us for the sake of working on our pride to get it up out of there, working on our ego to get it up out of there, we understand that we're in stretching seasons. There's some things that we have to go through. But guess what? Your focus, this is spiritual maturity. This is spiritual maturity. Y'all hear me? Your focus can't be about what you're going through. Your focus has to be about what you're becoming. If you don't have spiritual maturity, you complain about every bump and bruise. You don't have spiritual maturity, you just wonder, well, Lord, why are you doing, why they say that to me, why they walk out of my life? But when you've lived long enough and you realize that you're not yet what you're supposed to be, you understand that what I'm becoming is greater than what I'm going through. Are you seeing it? See, back up. In 1998, I took a job in Washington, D.C. area selling Steinway and Sons pianos. And if anybody knows Steinway, this is the best piano in the world. Handmade. Takes 14 months to build one. I sold these for 15 years. And it's something about when you play it, you can get so soft on the dynamic range. And you can play so loud and so many different in between. And it has a certain feel about it. But when I worked at Steinway Piano, there was one part of the job that annoyed me. And you know the part that annoyed me is when they used to come and tune the piano. They used to tune the piano. Can you imagine you minding your business at your desk and all you hear is dun, 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 for about two hours straight? How would that make you feel? But I used to get annoyed because they were tuning the piano and the tuner would take his tuning wrench and there would be some tuners that used to have a machine and they could see what the frequency, the right pitch was based on the machine. And there were some tuners that just knew and they had the ear and they could tell when it was tuned right. So what took place is they ended up twisting and turning stuff and hitting stuff hard. Bing, bing. No, that's not it yet. I gotta twist it some more. I gotta turn it some more. I gotta tweak it some more. Nah, that's not it quite yet. I got, I, got, I got to get it right because it's not quite there yet. And I don't know what the piano's probably like, ouch, you're hurting me, you're doing too much. But at the end of the day, the tuner knew exactly how much to turn it and twist it for it to release the right sound. And I don't know who I'm talking to in this room. We are being tuned. We are being turned. We are being tweaked because the tuner knows what it's going to take for us to release the sound that it's supposed to release. And truth be told, I was annoyed during the touring process, but when I sat down to play the piano, after it had been through what it had been through, it made such a beautiful town. It was such a beautiful medley, and I was thankful that the tuning process take place because the piano would have never reached its full potential. Somebody's got to be thankful in this room that God loved you enough to tune you. He loved you enough to twist some things in your life. He loved you enough to make you uncomfortable because at the end of the day, when you open up your mouth, you release the sound that God has ordained you to release. There's a praise that comes out of your mouth that wouldn't have been there if you hadn't been tweaked a little bit. There's a worship that comes from your belly that it wouldn't have been that way if you hadn't been turned to the left and turned to the right and had to go through some tough things. But at the end of the day, it was all worth it because now God has allowed you to release the right sound. Woo, somebody say amen. So you have to understand the stretching is about not what you're going through, it's about what you're becoming. See, when you get stretched, you can't just sit and be like, ooh, that hurts. You gotta be like, ooh, wait till I get to the other side. Wait till how I'm gonna look on the other side. Wait till the anointing that's gonna be in me. Wait till I have my prayer life. I'm glad that I'm going through this because my maturity tells me all things work together for good for them that love the Lord who are the called according to his purpose. So once I get finished stretching, I'm coming out as pure gold. Once I can finish being stressed, I'm gonna be holier. Once I finish stretching, my prayer life is going to be intact. Once I finish stretching, I'm going to be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Once I finish stretching, I'm going to look more like who God created me to be. And once I 
finish stretching, old things are going to have to stay dead. Once I finish stretching, old things have got to pass away because I understand I wasn't created to be like this because you is does not yet appear what we shall be. But if we continue to allow God to stretch us, we shall come out pure gold. I like, give God praise if you're grateful for the strength. This ain't a popular message, but it's necessary. Somebody say amen. This ain't popular, but it's necessary. You come to Freedom Movement Church, you realize we don't preach popular. We preach purpose. Sorry, if you want me, if you want to hear name and claim it, you got to go to church down the street. All I got is the truth of the Lord. Somebody say amen. I got, another, I got another point for somebody who's going through a stretching. Oh, you are blessed anyway. What you're, what you're becoming is greater than what you're going through. Oh, watch this. Point number two that we don't get to the word. The stretching of God leads to supernatural increase. Let me talk about this real quick. The stretching of God leads to supernatural increase. Hallelujah, it's right there. The stretching of God leads to supernatural increase. Hallelujah. I believe when you are obedient in your stretching season, increase is an automatic result. Y'all believe that? Amen. Ha, but wait, what do you mean by increase? I know. I'm not talking about the new car. Sorry. I'm not talking about the new house. Sorry. But I am talking about increase. Yeah. Uh, it's not about more money in your hands. Sorry, that's not what I'm talking about. But I am talking about increase. When you allow yourself to be stretched, you position yourself for supernatural increase. What do you mean by supernatural increase? Because the stretching process makes more room in you for God to move. When God stretches you, he makes room for more of him to operate and less of you. That's good. That's so good. as a result, supernatural increase is going to take place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's well, supernatural increase? Supernatural increase is not tangible. Stay with me. Supernatural increase is intangible. Supernatural increase isn't more money. Supernatural increase is more favor. Yeah. Oh, God. Supernatural increase, watch this. It's not just you getting on a platform that's not what it is. Supernatural increase is a greater anointing being able to come upon you because sometimes before God can fill you up, he got to first empty you. This ain't for everybody. Every now and then, the stretching process was designed for God to fill up, but also designed for some stuff to be torn down. Oh, God, see, God says, I've got a fresh anointing, but you've got to get rid of that old attitude. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I've got a greater work for you, but you've got to have more humility. Okay, see, I, I, I'm going to take you higher, but you've got to go lower. See, supernatural increase takes place when the fruit of the spirit begins to dominate your character. Ooh, who am I talking to? Where all of a sudden, love, joy, peace, a long suffering, all these things become a part of you because you've yielded to your flesh and the spirit of God is working boldly in you and now God can be seen in you like never before and as a result, increase can take place. Amen. Increase takes place supernaturally when God has more free reign to move in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm old enough where I don't waste time with God just asking him for material things. I know that if you seek first the kingdom and all his righteousness, all these other things shall be added unto you. You get to a point in your life where it ain't about cars, it ain't about houses, it's just about more of God. And you say, Lord, I just need more of you. Lord, if you would just show up in my life. See, over time, when you allow yourself to be stretched, your prayer begins to change. And what you believe God for begins to change. Because you used to be surface and selfish, but now you're selfless. And you're not just saying, bless me. Now you're saying, use me. Oh, God, you're saying anoint me so 
so I can pray for them. Anoint me so I can lay hands on the sick. Anoint me so I can go boldly speak the word of God. Anoint me so I can look like you. Anoint me so I can be the father you've called me to be. Anoint me so I can be the husband you've called me to be. When you've been stretched, you understand that supernatural increase takes place. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. So my prayer is, Lord, let me be in the grocery store and somebody see you in me and they'll say, what must I do to be saved? My prayer is in the neighborhood as I say hello. They'll feel the love of Jesus Christ and they'll come running to the altar. That's what supernatural increase is. We as the body of Christ, sometimes we chase the wrong things. Some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but I don't know about you, but I will trust in the name of the Lord. I will bless the Lord because at the end of the day, the Lord God stretches me. All of a sudden, he can use me at a greater capacity and we can walk in supernatural increase. Somebody say increase. Oh, you begin to ask for supernatural increase. Your faith begins to grow. When you believe God for supernatural increase, now God can work the miracles through you that he's designed to work because now you have the faith. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God is not going to move past your level of faith. Did you hear what I said? He's not going to move past your level of faith. He's not going to give you more than what you expect. Hey, do you hear me? And many times we're wondering why God isn't moving. God said, it's not my move, it's your faith. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. And the more you allow your faith to be increased, the greater work God can do in and through your life. Are you saying this? Amen. Oh, that's why you got to step out. Somebody say amen. amen. Listen, there is a word in this text. This is for somebody that's embracing stretching season. And you're going to walk fearless in it. There is a word from this very familiar text, but you should never just call a text familiar because there's always new revelation that God can speak in a familiar text. And there's some things that have come out that I want you to get. I need you to grab hold of this. Buckle your seatbelts if you want more from God. Buckle your seatbelts if you're not happy where you are and you know God created you for greater. If that's you, this is a word for you. Let's go. So we see Jesus, he's at a point where he tells the disciples, immediately it says, Matthew chapter 14, verse 22, he says, get in the boat. Go ahead and get in the boat. It's time for y'all to go to the other side. Y'all see it? We're in Matthew chapter 14, verse 22. He makes the disciples get in the boat and go on the other side while he dismissed the crowd. And the Bible says in verse 23, and after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Yeah. When evening came, he was there alone. You see verse 23? Yeah. He dismissed the crowd, watch this, and he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Yeah. This is point number one if you're going to step out and you're going to accept stretching season and go to the next level, I need you to write this down. The consistency of your fearlessness is connected to the consistency of your prayer life. Yeah. Let me say that one more time. I think you missed it. The consistency of your fearlessness is connected to the consistency of your prayer life. It's right there in the text. See, on the surface, yes, he's going by himself to pray. But what's crazy about this text is not the fact that he prayed. But it's when he prayed. So do you remember he said he dismissed the crowds? What crowds did he dismiss? It's very important whenever you're studying a text, never just read the text in isolation. Always read what came before it and what came after it. Amen? So the question was, what crowd did he dismiss? Remember, there's about 5,000 folk who was real hungry. You remember them? And all of a sudden, Somebody had two fish and five loaves of bread. And they brought the Jesus. Jesus like, okay, bet. Everybody go ahead and have a seat. I'm going to handle this. And the Bible said 5,000 were fed. You see this? So basically what took place when Jesus was dismissing the crowd, 
It was right after a miracle. Oh, stay with me. It was right after a miracle. So as soon as he worked the miracle, he dismissed them, but he went by himself to pray. Yeah. See, it's interesting. He prayed, Minister Shabbat, he prayed after the miracle. Uh -huh. How many know it's easy to pray before the miracle? Because when you need God to work a miracle, are you praying without ceasing? You on your face. Oh, the fire of God is in you. You go fast, turn down your plate, turn off social media. You go do whatever you got to do so you can get your breakthrough. But the key to your prayer life and walking in fearlessness is not how hard you pray before the miracle. The question becomes how hard you going to pray after the miracle. What do you mean? Because many times people get attacked after the miracle. You know why? It's because their guard goes down because God has already moved. Are y'all seeing it in the text? See, Jesus had presence of mind to know that he needed to pray so the miracle can come. But even after God answered the prayer, he still needed to pray. See, we've got to get to a point in our life that we don't just go into fervent prayer when we need something from God, but we go into fervent prayer because we need God. See, we can't just go into fervent prayer when somebody's sick and we can come together and touch and agree. Sometimes you've got to come together and touch and agree just because God is good, just because God is faithful, just because God is awesome. So we can learn something for Jesus because just because the miracle happened didn't mean he stopped praying. Yeah. And y'all seeing it? Uh -huh. Very important. The consistency of your fearlessness, watch this, is connected to the consistency of your prayer life. Yeah. That's why many times when we feel fear, we ask God to give us courage. But God said, I didn't create you to give you incidental courage. Okay. Did y'all hear me? That means I don't just give you spot courage in the moment where you feel fear. Amen. But when you have a consistent prayer life, it, has to, it goes from your fear and your courage being an incident to your courage being an identity. Yeah. Because the more you have a consistent prayer life, Fearlessness is not just what you believe God for. Fearlessness becomes who you are. Yeah. Oh, y'all missed it. Fearlessness becomes who you are. Mm -hmm. So the consistency of your fearlessness is connected to the consistency of your prayer life. Mm -hmm. Because what ends up happening, when you are proactive in your prayers, even when the storm comes, you've already been prepared. So you're already prepared for danger seen and unseen even before they happen. Many of us are reactive in our prayer life and we only pray when we react to the next storm and the next trial. But there is somebody in here that you are already prayed up before your boss attacks you. You are already prayed up before they try to talk behind your back. You are already prayed up when the enemy tried to lie to you and steal your joy. You are already prayed up when they tried to come and give you that bad news. You are already prayed prayed up when they tried to mess you up and get you out of your character. You were already prayed up when they walked out of your life. You were already prayed up because you said no matter what bless this day in advance whatever I have to go through in advance I'm going to already be prayed up. I'm going to already be ready. So as soon as the enemy comes, you've been waiting for him. Oh, hey, devil, how you doing? I've been waiting for you. I've got the word in my mind, and I can discern what's taking place even before it happens because I'm prayed up. And the enemy knows that we go through dangers, seen and unseen. We go through trials and tribulations. But when you have a consistent prayer life, your fearlessness is who you are. Your fearlessness is your identity. Your fearlessness is how you run. At the end of the day, no matter what he does to you, you're already covered by the blood of Jesus. Yes, sir. Ooh, somebody say amen. amen. Watch this. So after he dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. Hallelujah. It's awesome we come together as a church body. Yeah. But every now and then you got to get by yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's awesome we come together corporately and we play Let Us Pray. 
But something is wrong if the only time you pray is when you come here. Something's wrong if the only time you pray is when you come here. And every now and then you've got to know how to get by yourself and pray. Watch this. This story is crazy, y'all. Y'all still with me in the Bible? We're going to do some teaching. Watch this. When evening came, he was there alone, Jesus. But the boat, by this time, was a long way from the land. Jesus sent the disciples, go ahead, get in the boat. But then it says, the boat was beaten by the waves. For the wind was against them. Okay, so you mean to tell me Jesus told his disciples to get in the boat and go to the other side. He didn't go in the boat with them, and all of a sudden it starts storming like crazy. You remember the other story where Jesus was sleeping in the boat? That's one thing. But in this story, Jesus wasn't even in the boat. He says, get in the boat, go to the other side. Jesus, you could have told us that it was going to rain and be off the chain and water be in the boat. You conveniently left that part out and just told us to go. Uh See, sometimes God can't tell you all that's coming because if he told you, you wouldn't go. Uh (laughs) See, some of y'all, if y'all got too much information, you'd be like, nah, I'm good. I'm going to stay right here. I appreciate you. Nah, that ain't for me. But every now and then, he keeps some of the information from you. Because you know why? He just says, go into the boat. I want you to see this. So watch what took place. They went to the boat. And check this out. The Bible says, I want you to see this timeline. When evening came. Somebody say evening. Evening. Okay, that's cool. They went to the boat at evening. Read your Bible closely. But watch what he says. Verse 25. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them. The Bible says evening had came, verse 23, but verse 25 said in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus walked out to him. Let me get this straight. I want y'all to understand. I think y'all get it. Evening in Hebrew culture starts at 6 p.m. The fourth watch of the night it's 3 a.m. Come on now. Which lets me know that they just went in the boat for about 20, 25 minutes and started raining. Yeah. If my timeline is correct from the text, they were in the boat for about nine hours. Wow. Not only were they in the boat for nine hours, but it was storming and the, 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 the winds were beating all over them, but yet Jesus told them to go. So they had a storm, they had an inconvenience, but they were right where they were supposed to be. Uh Am I reading the right text? The text did say, get in the boat and go to the other side. Mm -hmm. But they ended up being there nine hours before Jesus showed up, and it was storming like crazy. Point number two, opposition in the midst of obedience is opportunity. Uh, I'm going to say it again. I'm going to say it again. Opposition in the midst of obedience is opportunity. It's right there in the text. I want you to catch this. God has raised up a mature church. I want you to get this true. See, somebody knows what it's like for it to be storming in your life because you want some foolishness. I got two or three people. That's all right. (laughs) And you know, you like Jonah. Remember Jonah? They was like, yo, why is it raining so hard? Jonah knew. Oh, it's because of my foolishness. Yeah, I was supposed to be going to Nineveh, but I'm at Tarshish. I'm I'm, I'm out here. I ain't supposed to be here. That's why it's raining. We all lived that. Haven't we lived it? Yeah. But what do you do when you prayed and got clarity from God and he told you to move exactly where he told you and you went Step by step, exactly where God told you to go, and yet it's still storming. What do you do when you took him at his word and you walk in obedience and you say, okay, Lord, 
I'm finally going to do it your way. And right when you do it his way, all hell breaks loose. Somebody needs to understand stretching season. Stretching season, you realize that when you're in obedience but experience opposition, it's not for your death, it's for your opportunity. Yes, yes. Get this, get this, it's opportunity. Because whenever God allows you to go through something while doing what you're supposed to do, it's an opportunity for God to be glorified in a new kind of way. Whenever you find yourself in a trial and a tribulation, but you did all that God told you to do, but it's still raining, it's still coming down on you, it's still weighing you down, it's an opportunity for God to show you something, not about the storm, but about himself. So if you're in a place that you're in obedience, but it's still raining, put on your raincoat and give God praise, because it's an opportunity. If you're in a place where you're in obedience and it's raining, get your umbrella out, put it up in the air, and begin to shout unto God with the voice of triumph because God is about to work a miracle that's going to knock your socks off. He's going to work a miracle that's going to blow your mind. Every now and then when you see the enemy show up and you know that you were prayed up, you know that you fasted. You know that you tithed. You know that you did what he's supposed to do. And all of a sudden, you're going through the valley. Don't be discouraged by the valley, but be encouraged by the table that's prepared for you in the presence of your enemy. Who am I talking to in here? Oh, I must have a table coming if I've got to walk through the valley. Oh, I must have a blessing coming if I've got to walk through the flood. Oh, I must have a breakthrough coming if they're attacking my child like that. Oh, I must have an increase coming if they're attacking my finances like that. I don't know who I'm talking to, but every now and then, if I'm in obedience and I've got opposition, it's an opportunity to give him glory. There's somebody here that can just thank him in advance. I need somebody right now. You're going through in the midst of obedience. You're going through in the midst of being inconvenienced. But at the end of the day, you got a smile on your face because you're saying, baby, guess what God's about to do? Amen. So opposition in the midst of obedience is opportunity. Jesus knew that they were going to have a storm. Jesus knew exactly how long to leave them out there. Jesus was praying, but he knew time was passing. And every now and then, God specializes in divine delay. He specializes in divine delay. Amen? We about to come into Thanksgiving season. Amen? Oh, God is so good. I just felt, oh, yeah. Thank you. Hallelujah. My wife is so modest. She is a monster cook. Amen. She's from macaroni and cheese. She's award winning. Amen. Take that across the country and go into business. Hallelujah. But what would she look like if she took the mac and cheese out 30 minutes before it was ready? She knew exactly how long to keep it in. But at the appointed time when it was ready, now it's going to serve its purpose. And God said, it was my decision to leave them on the water for nine hours. Because that was the time that it took for them to wait. And now here I come. Are you seeing this? How many know when God shows up, he's never late? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I know what Mary and them said when Lazarus was sick. They were just like, man, if you had been here, all this wouldn't have happened. But every now and then said, man, if I would have shown up if he was sick, I would have just did a healing. But I showed up when he was dead so I could do a resurrection. Every now and then, he allows some things to linger to get worse before it gets better so he can work a greater miracle in your life. So if you've been waiting, Keep waiting. If it's getting worse, keep praising. If it seems like it's not turning around, keep a smile on your face. Because if you would continue to wait on the Lord, he's going to do exactly what he says. Last time I checked, the Bible said, 
They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on the wings as equal as eagles. They will run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Every now and then, God blesses you by making you wait. I know you've been on the water, but keep waiting. Yes, sir, yes, sir. I know it's raining, but keep waiting. Yes. I know you've been in obedience, but keep waiting. Yes. And I promise you, if you stay in obedience, yes. the last time I checked the word of God, he said, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out blessing. You have not room enough to receive. Are you hearing this? Yes. Watch this. Point number three, I don't know what you see. Are y'all being blessed so far? Amen. We got this point, so we got to go eat family dinner. Amen. Amen. Watch this. Fourth watch of the night came. He came out walking on the sea. Look at God. Okay, that's cool. It's raining and storming, but you're going to walk on the wall. Okay, all right, okay. They were terrified, the Bible says, and it said, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. They were scared. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them, saying, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Oh, I want y'all to see this. Oh, this is beating this text, I want you to see it. Watch this. The disciples saw him walking on the sea. So Jesus, when he finally came out, he came out in grand fashion. Amen? Amen. He did what we couldn't do. He found himself... Walking on the sea. And then they were terrified. They were terrified and said, Lord, it's a ghost. Wait, 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 what's going on? But immediately he said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. In other words, they were in the midst of a storm and Jesus showed up walking on the sea. And then when he saw that their fear rose up to the surface, he spoke to it and said, don't be afraid. Yeah. Let me say it one more time. So, it was storming, but when they showed up, they had his presence. Mm -hmm. And he was walking on the sea. Mm -hmm. But then, their fear rose up from them. Mm -hmm. And immediately, he spoke to their fear and said, fear not, do not be afraid. Yeah. Point number three, please write this down. Oh, this is profound. Write this down. The presence of and promises of God are more than enough. Ooh, amen, amen. The presence and promises of God are more than enough. Did you notice in the text when Jesus showed up walking on the water and he said, do not be afraid, it's me? You notice that it kept raining. They were crying out because they were uncomfortable about the storm and the rain. Jesus showed up, walked on the water, and he said, don't be afraid, but the storm kept going. Yeah. See, here's what you got to understand. Sometimes we would think that if God finally showed up, he would have immediately calmed the storm. He didn't calm the waters, he walked on it. That was rough, and the thing that was tough, he didn't call it, he walked on it. <laughs> so he showed up and he wanted to give them a signal that no, I know I'm here, but it's not time yet for me to calm the storm, but it's time to show you that my presence has authority over the storm. Oh, don't miss this. So he showed up and he walked on the thing that was turbulent. He stood over the thing that was causing them harm. Are you seeing it? But at that point, their fear rose up. And right when their fear rose up, he said, take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. The purpose of this trial was not for Jesus to calm the storm. But it was for Jesus to speak to their fear. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, are y'all seeing it? Every now and then, when
when God shows up in your storm, he doesn't immediately rebuke the storm, but he did immediately rebuke their fear. Oh, you see it? Oh, God, it's right there. He says immediately. He didn't wait on that. He waited to show up, but as soon as their fear reared his ugly head, he immediately said, take heart, it's me. Take heart, it's me. You go to the next level of God where your fear shifts, but the storm don't shift. You go to your next level in God where your trembling shifts, but the storm stayed the same. And the only thing that changed was now your fear became boldness. Now your timid became courage. And all of a sudden you were in the same place at the same time, but you had a different place because you had an encounter with God in the midst of your storm. And you said, God, even if you don't remove the storm, I'm not afraid anymore because you are with me. And there's somebody here that knows that the presence of God and the promises of God are more than enough. Every now and then, God will ordain the storm not to just speak to the storm, but to speak to your fear, to speak to your doubt, to speak to your timid, to speak to your hesitation, to speak to your wondering and confusion. And at the end of the day, I'm going to keep the waters rustling, but as long as you see me, you know it's all handled. As long as you see me, you know I'm taking care of it. As long as you see me, my presence and my promises are more than enough. So I give God praise right now. Do y'all see it? Hallelujah. We'll miss our blessing if we keep asking God to speak to the storm. God said, that ain't the storm I'm trying to speak to. If you believe to speak to this storm out here, God said, that's the wrong storm. I'm trying to rebuke that storm inside of you that's keeping you from stepping out on faith. I'm trying to rebuke that storm in you that's keeping you from trusting me and taking me at my word. I'm rebuking that storm in you that's keeping you from walking boldly in who you are and your identity. And at the end of the day, we're thankful that God rebuked the right storm. Ooh, good gracious. Hallelujah. The presence and promises of God are more than enough. Y'all see this? Oh, this is important. This is a simple thing on paper. I just read it. It sounds so simple. Yeah, presence and promises of God are more than enough. It becomes more than enough when you're not panicking no more. It becomes more than enough when you're not shaking your boots no more. That's when you know the word is taking root. But when, sometimes when the word takes root in your life, you're different. Even though the storm might be the same. Are y'all there? Yeah, Watch this. Point number four, we gotta go, y'all. We gotta go. I'm hungry, amen. Watch this. <laughs> Immediately, Jesus spoke to them, saying, take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Ooh, watch Peter. I like Peter, man. <laughs> Peter's my dog, man. He's my dog. Yeah. Peter, out of everybody, everybody was shaking their boots. Hey, come on, Peter, boy. <laughs> Quick with it, hot-headed. Cutting somebody's ear off. He just cracked the nine Jesus. Just, just a mess. Peter says, Lord, if it's you, command me to come to you on the water. Yeah, yeah Peter. Everybody called him Peter's faith week. But watch the text. If it's you, command me to come to you on the water. If his faith was really weak, he would just try to come to the water on his own. And he would have sunk in the first place. If his faith was really weak, he would just jump out there and say, man, if I, I could just walk on water. But he said, if it's you, command me. That's faith. But Peter says, if you don't command me, I'm not going. But if you command me, I know I'm able to go. Not because I'm physically able to walk on water, but just supernaturally able to do exceedingly and abundantly what they would all for ask for a thing. He says, if you're, you think I can be able to do it, command me. And if your word goes before me, I can do anything. If your word goes before me, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If your word goes before me, I'm more than a conqueror. If your word goes before me, command me and I'll be able to go. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Come on now. 
Watch this. Woo! I feel God here. He said, command me. Oh, look at Jesus. Jesus like, you better watch what you wish for. What? You work or command me? Jesus said, come. Come. Some of y'all are still in the boat. You asking what God wants to do next in your life. You still have an answer when he said come. still waiting on God for a revelation. What part of come did you not understand? And God says, you think you're far behind? You should have been out here on this water. I told you last year to come. I told you six months ago to come. So why are you still in the boat? Somebody say amen. So watch this. He said, all right. So Peter started to come. And he went, and guess what? Oh, ordinary Peter was walking on the water. Oh, ordinary Peter was walking in the supernatural. Not because he was so special, but he had faith enough to take God at his word. You'd be surprised the supernatural move of God that's waiting for you if you would just take God at his word. So he started walking. But the Bible says, yes, he was walking on the sea. They were all amazed. This is crazy. All of that. But then, something happened in verse 30. And Therese said, but when he saw the wind, he was afraid. He was doing so good. He was walking in that crazy kind of faith. He was walking on water. Folk came from, folk from, 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 about what Peter saw when he saw the wind. And in my research, I looked up scientificamerican.com and it said that the wind is a combination of motion of air molecules. Yeah. So with air, watch the wind, uh, it's about 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen. Uh-huh. And I'm looking at it, so I'm wondering, how did Peter see the wind? Because according to my research, nitrogen 78%, oxygen 21%. Has anybody in this room seen wind before? I come to the conclusion, based on my research, and I've concluded that wind can't be seen. So why does the Bible say, when he saw the wind? I'm glad you asked. Because wind can't be seen by itself. Yeah. But wind can be seen based on the impact it has on something else. Wind by itself can't be seen. But wind can be felt because you see what it does to the things around you. And that's why you can tell that the wind is blowing. And too many of us have gotten distracted by seeing the wind. But truth be told, we didn't see the wind. We saw stuff around us shaking, and we got scared because we thought we were going to be shaking. But you not like the other stuff. I know the winds and the waves, they were shaking, but they weren't under the word of God. God told you to come. It doesn't matter what's shaking around you. If you obey the word, you're going to continue to walk. Stop looking at how it's impacting somebody else. Stop looking at how it's messing somebody else up. It's not about them. It's about you. What did God tell you to do? I promise if you walk in the word, the wind can't mess with you. I promise if you walk in faith, the wind can't blow you over. I promise you when you walk by faith and not by sight, that thing can't. 
can't take you. You can't sink. You can't drown. You can't lose. You can't fail. You can't throw in the towel. You've got to keep your head up because at the end of the day, it's the wind that's around you. But when you're under the word, you have a choice. Are you going to pick the wind or are you going to pick the word? Which one are you going to pick? Which one are you going to pick? Are you going to pick the wind or the word? Point number four, I need you to write this down. Point number four, write this down. Authentic fearlessness occurs when faith aligns with focus. Did y'all hear what I said? When faith aligns with focus. Woo! Watch this. Fearlessness is never just about faith. Because Peter had faith. Uh -huh. Are y'all seeing it? Yeah. But Peter didn't have focus. See, many of us. Wow, God is so faithful. He's awesome. He continues. <laughs> but we don't have the focus to finish. <laughs> and you heard God. And you said I know he's telling me to do this. Yeah. So you stepped out. But it's not just about faith. It's about focus. Because faith will make you step out of the boat. Yeah. But focus will keep your eyes stayed on yeah. Jesus yeah. in spite of the storm. Faith will make you declare the truth of God. But focus will make you stand on it when the enemy's coming against you like a flood. Faith would say, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. But focus is when I'm trying to do it, and the enemy's trying to keep me bound. But I can still settle in on God, even though what's coming against me. You've got to have faith, but you've got to have focus. Faith will cause you to believe it, but focus is going to cause you to walk in it. Faith is going to allow you to decree it, but faith allows you to be sustained, even three weeks from now when you don't see it. Faith says, you know what? I know what the word says, but focus says, I'm going to apply the word to my life. And I'm not going to stop until I see the word be manifested in my life. I know you got faith, but do you have focus? Faith says, I know what he says, but focus says, I'm going to pray and fast, and I'm not going to let go until you bless me. Faith says, yes, I know what he says, but focus says, I'm going to keep my mind stayed on him. And he's going to keep me in perfect peace. Is there somebody here that's going to walk in focus today? Is there somebody here that's not going to be distracted today? Is there somebody here that's going to say yes to the Lord no matter what it feels like? Is there somebody here that's going to say yes no matter what the storm says? Is there somebody that's going to say yes no matter what the wave says? Is there somebody here that's not only going to have faith, but you're going to have focus? Somebody give God praise right now. Somebody give him praise right now. If you believe in God for the focus, I don't want to fall. I believe what you're saying. I'm standing on your word. I'm going to walk on the water. No matter what the storm says, I'm going to walk on the water. No matter what the wind says, I'm going to walk on the water. No matter what the doctor says, I'm going to walk on the water. No matter what the economy says, I'm going to walk on the water. Is there somebody here that's going to walk in faith? Somebody give him praise right now. Somebody bless his name right now. Somebody glorify him right now. Wow, God is so faithful. He's awesome. He continues to bless us and meet us at Freedom Movement Church Sunday after Sunday. Wow, I'm so blessed. We are in a new series, Fearless. And God is using us in this time and taking us higher. And I don't know about you, but where God is taking me, where God is taking you, the spirit of fear can't go with you. And we're excited about what God is speaking and we're believing that God will take you higher and that you will walk boldly by faith and not by sight in Jesus name. We always thank you for tuning in. It's a blessing to have you all with us. If you wish to give, you can give online at cash app, dollar sign, freedom move. Or you can give by PayPal, www.tinyurl forward slash freedom move. Bible said the Lord delights in a cheerful giver. I can't wait until next week. We will be right back here at 11 o'clock a.m. And we ask that you would tune in 
uh, on Facebook Live. Uh, you can catch us on YouTube and you can also catch us on the website. But we'd love for you to come in person. We're at 1148 JVL Court, Marietta, Georgia. 11 o'clock a.m. is going down. And we're believing that we're all going to walk in the will of God and we're going to be fearless. This is Pastor Jeff signing off. Can't wait to see you next week. Love you so much.